the Queen Six offsuit gets out of the way. Back to Mini Gus, Paul Phillips. He's got an ace five this time. On the button, in position. That button, of course, representing where the dealer would be. That's a good place to be in Holden Poker. Notice Abe staring him down. Yes, he does. But when a guy's staring you down like that, it generally means they're going to play the pot. Hundred. Well, Paul's going to go up to make it a hundred thousand. Mel going out, but Abe interested with the king nine offsuit. Here he goes again. Brooklyn Kid not going to let Paul get away with it. He is calling. Calling the raise out of position here with the king nine. Hand continues. Here we go. And he hits the kings. Yes, he does. So it comes king jack six. Abe checks. Now Paul has not hit his hand. He just has ace high. How is he going to play this? Well, Abe might be trying to trap him here to check raise him maybe. Look at the intensity on the Brooklyn kid. Will Paul fall into the trap? Hundred. Paul bets a hundred. Paul thousand. bets a hundred thousand here. Right into the kid with kings, and he's quickly just going to call it. Call. Abe just call calls. He doesn't raise him back here. So now there's about four hundred fifty thousand in the pot. The turn card coming up. Here it is. Another now jack. it's a jack. Now the board pairs jacks. No help for Paul Phillips. Check. Abe checks again. Yes, he does. Now, Paul with just an ace high here, remember? Well, he's in that position. He has to act last. He doesn't know whether there's a trap play going on here. 300. Paul's going to bite for 300. 300,000, Paul bets at this pot. Two jacks, king, six on board with two dots. Wow. Now, that's going to put Abe to the test here. That is a brave bet. You know, by not raising on the flop or betting on the flop or the turn, Abe has got himself in a cookie jar here, Vince, because now he doesn't know what to do. That king nine doesn't look so good anymore. Just in case his opponent had a jack, he's now made three jacks. It is it's going to be a tough call. He is in a spider hole right now. Well, he's drinking that water fast, Vince. Water. This is one of the happiest poker players I've ever seen. But right now... Okay. He lays it down, Vince. Oh, he does lay it down, and it was the pressure from Paul Phillips. So well done. Yes, it was. No question about it. And Abe has been spanked twice here tonight, first by Gus, now by mini Gus, Paul Phillips. Let's take a look at where Abe went wrong. Well, he made a pair of kings on the flop. He could have taken the lead there and bet. Instead, he checked and then called Paul's $100,000 bet. When the jack comes on the turn... Check. Abe again checks to Paul, letting Paul take control with the $300,000 bet. Now, what he was thinking here is he and Paul both had over a million dollars when the pot started. He didn't want to face another big bet at the river where he might jeopardize all his chips. It just goes to show you the guy who takes the lead, the aggressive player, has the advantage and won this pot because of it. Paul Phillips showing the pro that he is. Well, Vince, we certainly witnessed the inexperience of Abe on that hand. He ended up getting that pot taken away from him by Paul Phillips because he never took the lead. Back to the action is on the Brooklyn Kid. A7 this time of hearts. 120. He comes in for 120,000. Right behind 120. him, look at this Dewey Tomko has hit the Divas pair of queens. All in, all in Dewey says. Tino going out Dewey with 9-7. Right, Gus Hansen with Jack Deuce not going to call. Guy. Paul Phillips right behind him, not going to play. Mel's out. So we're back around to Abe here. Two magic words of Holden Poker, all in. Dewey with the ladies. It's the three words to Abe right now, dagger in me. 345 to Abe. He's got a pretty good starting hand, A7 of hearts. Well, it's going to cost him another 345000 to call this bet. And look at him staring down Dewey at this point. Oh. Well, this is the guy that said beforehand, he said, playing people in poker is overrated. I play percentages. But in the meantime, this guy stares everyone down like he's dissecting well, them. That's why he's backgammon expert instead of a poker expert. In poker, you must play the player. No, you got a good hand. The question is how good. <laughs> wow, talk about poker in a nutshell. Look at this. I like his attitude, though. He's got to be frustrated about that last hand. He flopped the top pair. He ended up losing that pot. I just can't imagine he would call Dewey with an ace and a seven. I call. 
He calls it. He's going to call it. Well, he may win this pot, but he, his armor's cracked here, in my opinion. Well, he's up against the ladies, the devious, the Gabor sisters, you name it. He's got some problems. He's a bit of a dog. We're going to see a flop. Here it is. It's Jack 6 5. Right now, he's going to have to catch an ace or two running hearts. Otherwise, Dewey Tomko is going to double up. And here we go. Turn the king of hearts comes on the turn, so now he has the nut flush draw here. Got a lot of outs here. He can catch a heart or an ace. If he doesn't catch that, Dewey will double up. Here comes the river. Dewey is not going to help the kid. Dewey's going to take the pot. His pair of queens holding up. Did you call with that hand? Did you call with that hand? Best would. And Vince, the guy from New York, he has cracked here, in my opinion, the last two consecutive deals, the way he's played them both. Mistakes on both hands have cost him dearly. But look at the smile is back on the Brooklyn kid. Constantly smiling, even when he takes bad beats. Well, that wasn't a bad beat. That was a bad play, Vince. I honestly don't believe any of the other players at the table would have called Dewey's raise there with the ace seven of hearts as Abe did. Well, right now, the poker perception of Dewey Tomko very strong. He makes a nice pot there, and he's right back in the action. He's been a school teacher. I made $6,100 a year. I had to supplement my income. I'd play poker all night and come there and sleep. It was the greatest job in the world. Uh, not because I slept all the time, but the kids were great. A golf course owner. When I became a golfer, I tried to become a scratch golfer, and once I became one, I kind of started looking for other things. And now, a casino owner. I get bored and uh, I need new adventures. Casino business is a pretty lucrative business. I like it. I've been in it about a year now. They didn't build all these lights out here in Vegas on a nonprofit organization. <laughs> and after a 15 year poker hiatus, there's yet another venture this second time WPT finalist wants to fulfill. Now it's another challenge for me to become a good player again. And my son's really the main reason I try to teach him how to play poker. And with a teacher like Dewey, his son's sure to learn one big lesson. Yeah, when my kids were growing up, uh, I used to tell them when uh, they was playing baseball, basketball, or anything, never show your emotions. Anytime you do that, you're giving your opponent an edge. How would you like to have that as a teacher <laughs> when you're five years old? Hey, I would have liked it. That would have been funny, bringing the cards to the school. And <laughs> okay, it's going to be on Dewey once again. This time he looks at a 9-3 offsuit, not going to call. So on Tino, he throws away a 10-8. Gus looking at San Francisco, 4-9 in his hand, 49ers. Not going to play. Now Paul Phillips only has a 5-3 offsuit. He folds. Back on Mel Judah. This time he's got an interesting hand. He's got Jack-10 of hearts. And he's just going to call 20 more thousand. Just going to call. 100. And the Brooklyn kid, can you spell tilt with a king six of clubs, is going up. Now he says 100,000. I said 100. I don't know what I can do. Now I think Abe wanted to raise that 100,000. That's 100,000 total, tournament director Jack McClellan tells him, which means it's going to cost Mel 60 more thousand to call, so he calls it. Well, Abe has been spinning out of control here a little bit. Well, he's got king six, and he raised the pot with it. Here we go with our flop. And flop is king, jack, seven. And they both hit pairs on the flop. Abe's being bigger with the kings. And Mel quickly checked, and we're on the Brooklyn kid. Now it's up to Abe. He's got two kings here, the top pair. Remember the last time he had him, he ended up losing the pot because he didn't play him. 150. And he makes a cool, calculated 150,000. But Mel, call. without hesitation, Mel moves all in on him. And without hesitation, Abe calls him. This is happening quick. We got kings against jacks. So right now, Mel is going uphill. He's got the second pair, two jacks. His opponent has the top pair, two kings. Mel is going to have to help his hand, or he's going to be our sixth place finisher. Incredible. Mel just not believing the Brooklyn kid, thinking perhaps that his jacks was in front. They are not. We see that. He is a dog going into Fourth Street. So this is a $900,000 pot now. Now he needs to catch a jack or a 10 or two running cars to make a straight, or he's going to be our sixth place finisher. And here we go. It's a seven. It pairs the board. Sevens does now, not help Mel. Well, that hurts Mel because now he can't win the pot with a 10 either. He must catch a jack. Here's the cash card. No, he's not going to do it. He doesn't do it. Mel Judah is going to be eliminated here. Mel Judah, a former winner on the World Poker Tour this season, is our sixth place finisher here at Palazzo. 
Very nice ovation from El Judah. Well, a very good sport. He puts on his jacket, shakes hands. He is going to take away $101,000 for his effort. The crowd loves him. But right now we are down to five, and the Brooklyn kid is coming back. Stay with us. We'll be back at Bellagio in Las Vegas right after this. Welcome back to the Bellagio Hotel and Casino, this week's stop on the World Poker Tour. Now back to the men at the center of all the action, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Well, Vince, former World Poker Tour champion Mel Judah has just been eliminated from this final table. We are down to five players. They're going to open up the game. It's just a little bit more. You can't wait for your big pairs. you got to gamble. Let's see what happens. Back on the kid. And Abe's going to be first. He throws away the 8-6. Dewey's going to throw quickly away an ace-5. Tino Lekic with a king-queen of spades. He's going to raise with a strong hand. Well, nice hand against the two blinds. 320. And look at this right behind him. Gambling Gus has an ace-10 of spades, and he's going up on him. He has. He's re-raised it to 320000 a $200,000 raise to his backgammon buddy. Paul with Jack-10 of hearts quickly going out. And look at this Tino with a strong starting hand. Finally made a play at me, Gus. 200 more. Yeah, the interesting thing is he's thinking Gus could be playing with anything. After all, he is the poker tramp. Well, it can be. This is a very difficult decision for Tino to make here. All right now, Tino's got about 450,000 left, Vince. He's got to put 200 of it in right now. That would leave him with only 250,000 left. We know they both have quality starting hands, ace-10 versus king-queen, all spades. These guys have battled many times on the backgammon table, but this is the poker table where Gus is king. What is Tino going to do? I call. He's calling. He's going to call it. So we're going to see a flop here, and right now there's over 700,000 in the pot, Vince. Give me a spin, baby. Gus is going to be in a nice position. Anything can happen on a flop, but he does have a nice position odds-wise with this hand. So remember, it's king, queen of spade. Gus has ace, ten of spade. So here we go, over 700,000 in the pot. Here comes a flop. And look at this, ace, king, jack. They have both hit the top pair. Yes, they have. It gives Gus two aces with an ace-high straight draw. Tino has two kings with an ace-high straight draw. That's a big flop. You got any of it, Gus? That's a big flop. Look at this little poker conversation. Tino says, have you got any of that? Oh, you have no idea. I think he's going to find out shortly. Gus does have the top pair here and an ace-high straight draw. He is sitting pretty. How is he going to play it? 300. I call. Gus is going to set him all in. So Tino going to quickly call a $300,000 bet. Yeah. And right now, for Tino to stay alive in this tournament, he's going to have to catch a king or a 10. I need your 10. A queen won't help him because that will give Gus an ace high straight. Really Tino quickly calls it because of Gus's reckless reputation. Can the man from down under survive this? We are going to see fourth street. It is a five. Well, a five Tino comes off, so right now king. Tino's down to a king or a ten. He must catch one of those cards. River card coming up. He does not. And he doesn't get it. So Tino is heading back down under as our fifth place finisher. Oh, a great effort by Tino today. Tino Lekic picking up $130,000 for his effort. Well, he salutes the crowd. The Aussies give him a nice round of applause. The best, the Aussies are gone now. They have gone out in sixth and fifth place here. I want to tell you, Mike, Gus Hansen, very impressive. He was changing gears like a NASCAR driver. Well, Vince, in no limit hold him. You have to know when to put the pedal to the metal, when to back off, when to change gears. Shauna Hyatt focuses on the strategy of changing gears in this week's Poker Corner, brought to you by Anheuser World Select. Flying down the raceway or fighting on the felt. If you don't change gears at some point, you're bound to burn out. You have to be extremely aware of your circumstances. They're all settled in. They know what the table flow is. They know who's playing how. 
you're cold. You're looking at eight other guys. You don't know what anybody's doing, really.